What's up today, guys? Welcome back to the RT Clinic. Today, I'm talking about delivering nebulized medication. Now, question is, have you ever seen anybody take their nab like this? <laughs> Cut to the intro. show today how to give a standard nebulizer treatment. We call this a T-neb, it can be called whatever, but this is your standard generic nebulizer. So we're gonna, I'm going to show you a little bit of how with medication in, they teach the patient their breathing pattern, and then some parts of your assessment while you're watching them take the nebulizer, and then after. So let's get to it. So there's some basic pieces to a nebulizer. First, of course, you're gonna have the nebulizer. Inside of it, as you take off the top, you see there's gonna be a baffle in here. And so what that's gonna do is oxygen is gonna come through this side, or air in your case, if you're at home. It's gonna come through, it's gonna cause splattering the medication, it's gonna break it up in a really small particle size. We don't like to call it smoke, we don't like to call it mist. We call it nebulized medication, because that's exactly what it is. So let me attach that. So the next piece, extremely simple. This is a T. As you can see, it goes right on the top. We then attach the mouthpiece. Of course, when I'm attaching the mouthpiece for the patient, I make sure I don't touch this part that's gonna be in their mouth because it's just kind of gross. And uh, I like to be courteous to them. So that, this piece would go on here. So I usually, if in the case of a patient, I would just use the bag to put that on. Uh, and then we have this piece here. So you may see a lot of nebulizers that just look like this. This is our reservoir. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about what this is used for. Uh, but I like to use it because it does allow them to get a larger amount of nebulized medication each time they take a breath in. And then our simple oxygen tubing that connects to the bottom and runs to the flow meter. There's a standard setup. So mouthpiece here, uh, we have our nebulizer, our T, and then our extra piece of tubing or reservoir tubing. So I'm gonna add, attach this to the flow meter. So this nebulizer front, this is specifically from Salter, and they're all very, very similar. Um, this is just what we use in our facility. This has to have at least, and per the, per the, um, the guidelines, this is supposed to have four liters at least. That's, that's super low. So what you're gonna wanna run most of your nebulizers on is eight liters per minute. Okay, if you have a home compressor, you turn it on, that's really what it's running on, maybe a little bit lower. If, but in the hospital, we're running off oxygen in this case, and we could run off medical air. Actually, medical air is does really well because it's not gonna mess with their PaO2 on their blood gas. It's not gonna give them extra supplemental oxygen if they do not need it. And especially on our NEOs and our PEDs, we use air. In this case, I'm just gonna do it with oxygen. So I would turn this up to six liters. You can hear it running through there, but there's no nebulized medication. So shut that off. To add nebulized medication to it, we just simply take off this part. Now we're gonna add it into here. <clears throat> the absolute key is that when you run uh, medication in these is that you have at least three milliliters of volume. Whatever you're doing, do not put a milliliter, two milliliters, at least three milliliters, and I wouldn't go more than six in most cases because what it's gonna affect is particle size, and we're gonna talk about particle size a little bit. So, we have our five ml normal saline bullet. We'll put about three in there. There we go. We're gonna attach this piece to the top, and then we're gonna start it up. Eight liters per minute. Now you hear it nebulizing. So in this case, you can see the nebulized medication is saline in this, in this part, coming out this side and coming out this side. This is not warm at all. This is not cool at all. This is room temperature. So it doesn't really have much of a temperature to it. But as you can see, it's coming out both sides. Now, the key is, is that they're gonna put this in their mouth and breathe it in. I'm gonna show you a couple key things to look for when they do that. So. When I hand this to a patient, what I'll do is I'll ask them, bite down the mouthpiece 
and I ask them to breathe normal. And then every four to five breaths, take a breath in and then let it out. The real key is that they have a smooth laminar flow when they're taking their treatment because we want to get it down to the lower parts of airways. Now, this is not a mist. Remember, this is not, uh, it's not vape, nothing like that. This is a nebulized medication and this particle size is three to five microns. And that's really important because that's exactly what it takes to get to those areas right above your alveoli where it can bind to those muscles and loosen them up. And that's what most of, well, that is what all of our bronchodilators do. So if I hand this to a patient, this is the normal breathing pattern. So I have to have them like this, right down. Notice a couple things with this. Uh, first of all, when I breathe in, you're gonna see the mist go in. When I breathe out, you should see it shoot out quickly. When I take the breath in, this reservoir works because it's, I'm not only gonna get the medication from here, I'm gonna get nebulized medication that's held in here. As you can imagine, we would get less in this case because I do not have the reservoir on. So, actually gonna allow you to get more medication, which is great. One thing you might also wanna coach your patients with, and tell me if you can figure out what the problem is here. The respiratory therapist out there probably can pick up on it pretty quick. Watch the nebulized medication here. Some patients you'll hand this to them, they'll put it in their mouth and they'll do this, breathe through their nose. See how this isn't moving at the end? Watch when I breathe in my mouth. One of the keys that I always look for, especially the confused patients, when you do that teaching, to stay there with them and you're watching chest rise, like, like chest excursion. So my eyes always go for chest excursion. And then I look at to see if they're pulling actually nebulized medication from the end of their nest. So that's really important to know that they're taking it right. If they start to fall asleep, sometimes they'll, you wanna make sure they're, wake them up, of course, but they may start breathing through their nose. Getting zero meds at that time because they're pulling air from the nose down the pharynx and not pulling anything, anything from the nebulizer. Now you're gonna hear, as this thing's running, you're gonna hear a change in the sound. You hear the change in the sound. It's called so many different things. Let's call it sputtering. Uh, it's really running out of medication is what it is. Now, once you start to hear sputter, these particle sizes are no longer three to five microns and you should stop the nebulizer. Technically, that's exactly what you should do. Now, there, there are a lot of patients and we're in customer service. So a lot of patients that will say, there's still some medication in there and they'll want you to tap it. You gotta tap it and knock some of the medication off the sides and maybe they can get one or two extra breaths out of it before it starts sputtering again. If it makes the patient happy, I go with it. But technically, when it starts to sputter, the treatment is finished. That didn't take really long because I'm using the compressed oxygen off the wall but it's still running at eight liters. So let's put some more medication in there. Again, you can hear the change in sound and as I get it closer you can hear that change really nice smooth you can see on the bottom here you see the nebulized saline you see it coming out see it on my blue shirt there well, hopefully you can see that see how it's coming out well there if we include this side that's all the nebulized medication coming out so there's also a big <coughs> controversy a lot of people you go into the room and they say I don't want to do that tea piece. The last therapist let me do the mask. So the mask is this, it's an aerosol mask. Let me talk about it a little bit. Not a big fan personally of the aerosol mask because I like to deliver as much of the medication as I can because if I'm in the room giving the treatment, I wanted to get the medication. An aerosol mask works like this. It goes on the patient, cart and drop, Uh, 
And when they take a breath in, they get medication. I'm gonna be honest with you. They get some medication from this, but what it does not encourage them to do is to take those specific breaths, especially those deep breaths. Because a lot of times you'll put this on a patient and they're gonna do this. They're gonna fall asleep. So they're gonna fall asleep and they're gonna not gonna get the medication the way they should. So I strongly recommend, there are definitely times to use a mask, but it's a very, very rare. I encourage the patient each time. I would really like, I tell them I'd really like you to try to use the tea piece for this treatment. Absolutely during the day too, because what it does, it makes them take an active role in their breathing when they're taking the medication. Be more deliberate about it, and I, I totally believe it delivers way more medication. So that's the use of a standard nebulizer. Um, I can't really think of much else I need to go over with this thing. Um, you know, there is, uh, there has been done before, which is definitely not encouraged. Blow by treatments. Now I'll give you an idea what a blow by treatment is. You'll hear this, you'll hear this give uh, told before. So what we would do is we would occlude one side. And maybe this would be a crying in for something and the respiratory therapist would hold these treatments. And if you have one of your really young, young ones, they're obligate nose breathers, don't point at their mouth, make sure you point at their nose. Because they're gonna take it in their nose and we would kind of, instead of using the mask, we would, would do this. Now, you decrease your medicine delivery by, I, I, I know you make the number up, but it's, it's you, you decrease a lot. So you're not delivering quite as much medication. So blow by is definitely not recommended. Although you can see when I'm talking and I take a breath in, it just almost makes this area like a little bit of a reservoir so I can take it in. That's what a blow by treatment is. So if you have a, if you have a young one and you have to do it, make sure you're aiming those obligate nose breathers. Don't aim in their mouth. Aim right there, right there below their nose. And that's where I try to keep the mist if I have to do it, but really try not to. So that's a blow by treatment. When you're done with your treatment, there's some other things you need to look at. So let's say they had us tap it or whatever, but you see there's still some medication in there. And every time you give medication, there's gonna be some of it that's not gonna be nebulizable. So it's just not gonna break up the way it should. What we need to do is make sure that is out of the nebulizer and not built into the next treatment because it will just stay in there and there'll be more unnebulizable medication and more and more and more. So we rinse out the we rinse out these or we especially, uh, if nothing else, you just dump out that nebulized medication uh, that's not being used. So a lot of times we can shut this off, open it up like this, and with a gloved hand you can dump out that uh, over a uh, trash bag or something like that. So to get that, that medication out of there that's just gonna sit there for the next treatment it's not gonna nebulize. The next treatment is not going to nebulize. That's absolutely normal. That happens with this type of medication. We're going to move to the next nebulizer, and it's one that's going to give a higher dosage in a shorter amount of time. It's similar to a breath actuate nebulizer. In this case, it's a, it's a tower nebulizer, and I'll show you a little bit about it. Um, but this one we use a lot in the ER or somebody we need to, to turn around real quick. This is our standard nebulizer. If you're getting treatments on the floor or if you're taking them at home, you're going to get these. Um, these are uh, cheap manufactured, um, mass manufactured, so they can be defective. So it's just a little thing to watch out for. One other helpful hint. Now this is just a little Jimmyism that I do uh, with my nibs. So when I take a nib out of the package for the first time for, my, for our patient, it's a dry, I call it a dry nib. So it's almost always going to run faster the first time than the second, third, fourth, or fifth because it's dry. So what I will commonly do with the with NEB when I take it out of the package is I will put saline inside of it, swish it around, and then pour it out. What that does, it kind of just starts the nebulizer off so it's gonna last the same amount of time each time. Your patients may complain. I've had them complain before where they say, um, th that nebulizer didn't take as long as the other one, or the other ones last night didn't take as long. Why well, just change the nebulizer out? So, it's very common, I'll, I'll do that. I'll take it from a dry nab, I'll make it a wet nab, I put saline in and dump it out, and then put the medication in. But I just think it's a patient satisfier, 
and it's something to give that consistency in the treatment time. Because when you give one of these, it's gonna be really fast compared to what they're doing at home. And they'll tell you over and over and over and over again that this is way faster than what they're doing at home. And it's because we're using the compressed air, or sorry, compressed oxygen out of the wall, 50 PSI liters per minute, and they're using a little air compressor. We're just always gonna run faster. But you don't wanna run a lot faster by giving that dry nev on the first nev. So it's just a little helpful hint to think about. But let's get to the tower nev. So this nebulizer looks a little different. Uh, you still have your nebulizer piece, the same old thing there. It's just built a little different here, as you can see that. It has a little one-way valve on the top, and then the mouthpiece is here. So the mouthpiece would go on here. We're gonna run it off the same liter flow as before, so we're running eight liters. And I'm gonna show you a little bit about it. It delivers, you can hear it running now, there's no medication in it, so let's set this off. This was a new nev, I would do just like I had said, and put some saline in it, shake it out, pour it out, and then put the medication in. But this piece comes off the top. We're gonna add some normal saline. Same dose, at least three mLs. Usually up to six. We can go a little higher than that, we don't really like to. If you're gonna look at this, you're gonna see some one-way valves right here. You're gonna see one right there. So that's gonna help to direct medication and really hold large doses in here so they get a large dose each time. So let's turn this on. There's the nebulizer running. And what it's gonna actually do, it's gonna fill this whole tower with nebulized medication that's ready to deliver. And also what it does, it really helps to keep up with their inspiratory flow. So when they take this in, they get a large dose of it. I like the way to hold it too. It's a little easier than the T-Nab. It kind of goes really nice in your hand. They can kind of do it like that if they want, but I, I still always recommend just keep it in their mouth. They blow back through it. See the one-way valve and it forces that air out that direction so but it will nebulize quickly but it gives them large doses so this is a patient that is an asthmatic that needs not just your 2.5 milligrams we're going to be adding a lot more to the treatment maybe five milligrams uh, seven and a half or ten milligrams so large dosages it helps the deposit really well because they get a lot more than what they get with the t nib So uh, just, just wanted to show that a little bit and that's how that works. You can do a little messing around here, put this piece on here. Uh, let's see, do I have my little... Yep, there it is. Uh, this goes in here and then what do you know? That goes on your mask. Remember, I know how I feel about masks. I'm not a big fan, but in case they want to do it with a mask, I think it's a waste. But whatever. Um, it does have that adapter in case you want to do that. You try to get them to do the mouthpiece. Like I said, it makes them take an active role in doing their nebulizer treatment. So, hey guys, I think that's all I have. Please like, subscribe, comment to the RT Clinic. And uh, put any questions if you have them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you. I also want to thank the Indiana State University PA program for the sweet shirt that I'm able to wear in today's video. Thanks, guys.